Imagine for a second that you've never heard of Minecraft. Yes, this will be a challenge, as for many of us it was an important part of our childhood. But now you know nothing about it. No memes, no history, no Minecraft Live, nothing. It's all gone. Now, let's say that one of your friends told you about this great new game called Minecraft. You buy it, download it, and open the game. How far do you think you could get with no outside help? How much of the game could you reasonably be expected to figure out for yourself? I've had this question in my mind for over 10 years. When the Nether was added in 2010, it really bothered me that there was no way to know how to build a portal using the information in-game. One of my friends had to tell me about it. Minecraft has changed substantially since then, but it still suffers from this problem. So how far could you get using in-game information only? Tonight, we're going to aim to finally answer that question. Here's how this will work. We'll simulate a blind playthrough of the game. As we discover features, we'll try to give them a clarity score from a scale of 1 to 5. 5 means that the information about how to access the feature is clearly obvious in-game. On the other hand, a score of 1 would be something that's essentially impossible to discover without outside help. So let's get started. When we enter a new world, the game does give us some basic hints. Move with W, A, S, and D. Jump with space. Fair enough, that's pretty easy. Look around, use your mouse to turn. Again, pretty straightforward stuff. We use our newfound controls knowledge to explore a bit, and we stumble upon a tree. Destroy the tree, hold the left mouse button, the game tells us. When we follow the instructions, we discover that the tree does indeed break, or at least part of it. Suddenly we get a notification stating that new recipes have been unlocked. Craft wooden planks, the recipe book can help. Awesome, but just how do we find this recipe book? Is it in the menu? We hit escape, but there's no recipe book option. Um, is it a keybind? Options, controls, keybinds, hmm, not seeing recipe book anywhere. Maybe it's in the inventory. Ah, that's it, there's a book button. Clicking on it, we see wooden planks on the side. Selecting it moves our log into the crafting section, and by selecting the planks, we have just crafted our first recipe. Doing so unlocks several new recipes, and our book updates accordingly. Let's try making sticks. Yes, this must be a crafting component, since it appears as though we've unlocked the recipes to several tools. But the tools don't show up in the book. What's going on here? Well, let's just make every other recipe available. Wooden button, pressure plate, crafting table. Could this be important? There's a symbol of it on the recipe book. While we have one, it's not immediately obvious what to do with it. But another trip to the controls alerts us to the fact that we can use an item with right click. So we right click once to place the table and again to bring up a different crafting interface. Now that's more like it. We can now craft our tools. Let's make a wooden hoe. When we pause the game, we see something called advancements. It currently tells us what we should do next, as well as the following step. Mine stone with your new pickaxe. There's a picture of a wooden pickaxe, so we make one and start mining. After digging down for a bit, we reach the advancement. Next up is construct a better pickaxe. We return to the crafting table and make a stone pickaxe using our new resources. The following advancement is a bit trickier. Smelt an iron ingot. Where are we going to find iron? It seems logical that this is a use for our new pickaxe. We begin mining, and after a few minutes we break a new block, resulting in raw iron. But this clearly isn't our final product, we need to smelt an iron ingot. It's not explicitly clear how to do that, but sifting through the recipe book leads us to a furnace. It has its own recipe book, and as we expected, we can smelt iron and complete the advancement. Wood is a logical choice for fuel, and before we know it, we have our iron ingot. Night has fallen upon our world, and we're startled to see several hostile enemies attacking us. We can attack them back, although we aren't quite sure what this little icon means. We also don't necessarily realize that darkness causes enemies to spawn. The game has no text suggesting that we should craft torches. At this point in the game, the possible advancements diverge. We could protect ourselves with a piece of iron armor contained in the recipe book. We could make an iron pickaxe. We could fill a bucket with lava. The game has taught us the basics of Minecraft, the importance of mining and how to craft. More subtly, it's alerted us to some other important elements, such as how there are different tiers of materials which can be used for tools and armor. However, there are a few critical mechanics that aren't explained. First, the importance of food. This one's probably one we could figure out on our own, and we'd also be helped by the recipe book if we were to acquire raw meat. Another critical block is the bed. Tucked away in the adventure section of the advancements tree, we see that it's possible to sleep in a bed to change the respawn point. But actually making this may be a bit more tricky, as the bed doesn't show up in the recipe book. As we've learned, picking up new resources adds recipes that use them to the book. 
Right now, we don't know that we need wool. At this point in the game, the next step is to find diamonds and obsidian, which isn't too difficult. After enough time caving and mining, we will eventually stumble upon both of these. But making the jump to the nether will prove to be quite the leap. The we need to go deeper advancement tells us that it exists, but it's not obvious how to make a portal. The best clue we have are these mysterious structures scattered throughout the world. One of the nearby blocks is called Netherrack, which could indicate that it's connected to the nether. But even so, we need to figure out that this is intended to be the portal, figure out that it should be constructed upright, figure out that crying obsidian won't work for the frame, and then figure out that it has to be lit. For something so crucial, there are too many steps that have to be found consecutively. Getting to the nether is our first major roadblock. Despite some in-game help, the level of problem solving required to light a portal is far beyond anything Minecraft has asked us to do thus far. Once we finally do make it to the nether, an advancement tells us that we need to find another fortress. This isn't hard, all it takes is some exploration. It's also likely that we will kill blazes when we are here, since they're a new enemy. That will unlock the recipe for blaze powder, which in turn will open up the Eye of Ender if we've killed an enderman. We know that these are important because of an advancement. Eye Spy tells us to follow an ender eye. When we use one, it leads us in a direction. Finding the stronghold is fairly logical. When we discover the end portal, there's a 75% chance that there will be at least one Eye of Ender in the frame, which serves as a tutorial. Once we enter the portal, the dragon fight is very doable blind. It's visually obvious that it's being healed by the crystals, and we can damage the mob just like anything else. There are many new things to do once the dragon has been defeated. The next generation implies that we can pick up the egg. Figuring out how will take some creativity and will require us to understand torch mechanics, which we may or may not have learned. The method for respawning the dragon is not obvious whatsoever. The end again advancement tells us that it's possible and that it uses end crystals. However, we have no idea what to do with them. Remote getaway indicates that we can escape the main island. While the end gateways are glowing, we must still figure out that we need to use ender pearls. Otherwise, we could make a bridge to leave the island. The elytra is not difficult to find, and using it is fairly straightforward. However, nowhere does the game explain that fireworks can be used while flying, a crucial missing piece. We've also killed shulkers during our in-city raid. The recipe book tells us how to make shulker boxes, and while it's not mentioned, we can figure out that they're portable storage with some experimentation. Now that we've completed the main story and explored the end, let's return to the overworld to see what else we can do. If we wander for a bit, we'll stumble upon a village. Trading is easy, the UI is intuitive. Iron golems spawn naturally here, but instructions of how to build them are nowhere to be found. That's better than the snow golem, whose existence has no reference in the game whatsoever. Raids could be logically discovered, but they're also likely to happen by accident at some point. One thing that's much less likely to occur accidentally is curing a zombie villager. Despite the advancement telling us it's possible, the information needed for this is found in a very obscure place, hidden in the basement of some igloos. Once you're down here, the signs do help you with the process but getting to this spot is something that not all players are likely to do. While we're down here, we notice that the brewing stand has a splash potion of weakness. This tells us that the stand is used for potion making, and it's confirmed to be possible by the advancement. We can guess that we need blaze powder because of the UI. Even so, the actual process for brewing is a complicated sequence of steps. The game fails to even explain the importance of nether warts. What about other types of magic? The advancement and recipe book tell us that an enchanting table is possible. Once we make one, the UI is fairly straightforward, assuming that we've discovered Lapis. However, despite our ability to do simple enchantments, we have no idea that we should increase their potency using bookshelves. Furthermore, we can't know which enchantments are possible without many tries. With our newly enchanted gear, it's time to explore. If we happen to have cartographer villagers in our village, we can then trade with them for explorer maps. We'll start by following the ocean explorer map. Along the way, we stumble across a shipwreck containing another map. This leads us to a chest of buried treasure. It includes a curious item, a heart of the sea. The recipe book tells us how to make a conduit, but it does not tell us how to make the associated structure. And while we will soon find the ocean monument, it will be nigh impossible to defeat it without knowing about conduit power. Now we can follow our other map. This one will take us far, far away. It's not explained in-game that the nether can be used to travel through the overworld quickly, so we have to make the long trek instead. Upon killing an evoker, we pick up a totem of undying. The advancement tells us that we can use it to cheat death. We must learn that it has to be held for this effect to occur. All of this exploration has us worn out, and we want to do something a little more low-key. In our journey, we saw some bees. The associated advancement tells us what we need to do to get honey. There are also wild horses. 
Taming them isn't difficult, but we cannot ride them unless we've discovered a saddle. An advancement tells us that other animals can be tamed, including cats, wolves, and parrots. However, this type of taming is different, and we'll need to discover that these animals like certain foods. We also saw a fishing rod in the recipe book. When we try to use it, it's simple and works as we would expect. This has us excited to grow some plants, but unfortunately, the use of bone meal is not explained anywhere. We have some music discs that we found in the mansion. We can play them by making a jukebox, which is a logical step. Unfortunately, the process for discovering the rest of the discs is nowhere to be found. At some point, a skeleton killing a creeper will occur randomly, but we have to be paying attention to know what happened. We also cannot know if we found every disc, since there's no list. Another creeper-related feature is that mob heads are dropped when killed by a charged creeper. This is another thing that'll have to happen randomly for us to discover it, although it's much less likely. We decide that it's time to return to the nether to see what else there is. War pigs alert us to the existence of bastion remnants, so we need to explore to find them. Along the way, we see striders. This boat has legs tells us how to ride them, although this will only be possible if we've discovered how saddles work. Once we reach the bastion, Oh Shiny tells us that we need to give gold to piglins, teaching us about their trading mechanic. Wow, it sure is easy to get ender pearls this way. We should have done this the first time we were here. In one of the chests, we discover ancient debris and netherite scrap. This unlocks the recipe for netherite. While an advancement tells us it's possible to upgrade diamond equipment, it doesn't explain that we need to craft a special workstation for this. There's an advancement for summoning something called the Wither. The prerequisite is picking up Wither Skeleton Skulls. We saw these in the Nether Fortress. Yet, the advancement is silent on what we're supposed to do with these to summon the Wither. If we've been paying extremely close attention, we may have discovered that there's a painting that appears to show these Wither Skulls in a certain configuration. However, we'd still need to make the connection that the base is soul sand, so it's a tall task for us to discover on our own. Once we do kill the Wither, we obtain another star, and the recipe book tells us how to craft a beacon. The beacon's UI appears to show it on a pyramid structure. With some experimentation, we may be able to build it correctly. During our time in the Nether, mining Nether Quartz has unlocked several recipes. Turns out, there's an entire category dedicated to redstone. Some of these items are easier to understand, such as the buttons and levers. But even critical components are more obscured. The inversion property of the redstone torch needs to be discovered through trial and error. The comparator? Well, good luck. Even people who use tutorials struggle with it. Furthermore, Minecraft does not teach the basics of circuit design whatsoever. To become proficient, we will likely need a considerable amount of exterior knowledge. At this point, it seems as though we've seen most of what Minecraft has to offer. Now it's time to work on completion of the advancements. 2x2 two two asks us to breed all of the animals, but it doesn't tell us which animals are breedable. Baby polar bears exist, but we can't breed them. Mules are not breedable. However, for some reason we can breed the hostile hoglins. We can also breed villagers, but this doesn't count for the advancement. Also, we don't know which items to use for individual animals. Suffice to say, the 2x2 two two advancement is quite difficult to accomplish. So too is a furious cocktail, since there's no list of the required effects. Discovering them manually would be frustrating. That's not to mention the hidden achievements, which would only be discovered by the most enterprising of players. And that just about concludes our experiment. We've seen every major feature and several minor ones. So how did Minecraft do? How far could you really get with no outside knowledge? In my opinion, the most egregious issue is still the Nether Portal. It's one of the lowest scoring features, but it's absolutely critical if you want to complete the game. This needs to be fixed. It's such an important milestone that it shouldn't be this difficult to find. The ruined portals already serve as the ghost of a tutorial. When the player finds one, why not add a prompt that explains how to fix it? Alternatively, the advancement text could be rewritten to explain how to build a portal. In fact, this would help with many of the more mysterious features, like Elytra Flight, The Wither, The Conduit, and Potion Brewing. The system for in-game help already exists. Let's utilize it, make the advancements more clear. This would be an extremely easy way to improve the game for new players. The other advantage to this system is that the player can choose if they want the help by looking at the advancement screen. If you've been playing for a long time, there's simply no need for hand-holding. It's available as needed. Anyways, it's time to start wrapping things up. It was really fun for me to see how much of the game is discoverable with no outside knowledge. What do you think? Do you agree with my assessment? I always love reading your comments, so leave your thoughts below. We'll go ahead and end with that. This has been Retro Gaming Now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.